Welcome to Detroit Sports Jersey Media, Sundays from 11 a.m. to noon, broadcasting live from Detroit and stretching to Texas and the Virgin Islands, here on 107.3 FM WVIE, with co-host Longhorn, straight sports talk, no professionals here, and now here's your host that never gets it right, but is never wrong, Will. All right, all right, there we go, there we go, there we go. Welcome to Detroit Sports Jersey. I'm your host, Will, with the Longhorn sitting up in here. Are you ready, Longhorn? Do we have you? Prime time, Detroit Sports Jersey Media time. Let's get it on, Popcorn, the greatest Detroit sports station in the world, brother. You better ask somebody. If you don't know you, now you know. Oh, God, all right. Let me throw out the number. <laughs> We're going to chime in. We're going to start out get this bracket garbage out of the way. Ain't nobody winning no money. Ain't nobody winning nothing. <laughs> the brackets are over. It's a wrap. I told y'all from day one that my North Carolina Tar Heels was going to win it all. We're in the Sweet 16. Just to show you how two great minds think alike, me and Barack Obama, but he did kind of slip a little bit, might have had a nip when he made his prediction. But he picked Kansas over my Tar Heels in the finals. It ain't happening, Barack. Per President Barack Obama. It's not happening. <laughs> my Tar Heels are going to win it all. 313-868-0351. 313-868-0342. We have the lovely voice sitting next to what's me. Up, what's up, Shaza? Shaza, what's going on? I'm doing well. Thank you. I can't well, hear you. There you go. <laughs> Good morning, Longhorn. How are you today? Pretty good, mighty fine. Two shakes of a duck's tail. Oh, it's a duck's tail today. Okay. <laughs> Last week it was a puppy. All right. Well, I got her sitting up here next week, and I got some social media questions we're going to chime in, and I want to kind of get her opinion, you know, after we get this bracket situation out of the way, Longhorn. What do I uh, You got something to say on that, uh, about the brackets? Do I have something to say on the brackets? Not really, no. No, you know nothing about it. The yeah. brackets. <laughs> the brackets are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Shaza, I think I think you could guess the bracket as well as anybody because it's so? all a guessing game. All right, maybe I'll nobody I'll, knows nothing. Maybe I'll do that next year. Hey, I, mean, I bet you probably have a better chance than most of those sports experts like myself and Will. <laughs> <laughs> Let me Good tell you, um, I set up. I mean, I guess everybody want to say the big disappointment was when uh, Michigan State went out, you know, against Middle Tennessee. I sit up there and watch that game. Let me tell you something. You know Michigan State never led at not one point in that game. See what people fail. Let me tell you what people fail to realize about even though Middle Tennessee is out of it now. But teams like that, let me like you say, Longhorn, let me touch on this. Once again, I'm gonna throw out the number three one three eight six eight oh three five one three one three eight six eight oh three four two. Teams like that has nothing to lose. You don't expect yep. you don't expect them to go nowhere. So they can come out and play. They can just come out and play ball. We don't have to run no plays. Uh, well, we got to run. We just come out. Y'all ain't expecting us to to win nothing, no way. So we can they come, come out, out relaxed. Is at that day you go boom, and that's exactly what I saw in that game with Michigan State going against Middle Tennessee. I'm telling you, man, the boy, them boys was balling. I mean, I mean straight ball, and they had Michigan State like. What are we? What what's going on here? You know, we <laughs> we we didn't expect this. You know, That's right. and so like I said, even with Yale and Baylor, did nobody oh. expect Baylor to lose against Yale? Come on, Yale! Yale! Yeah! Yale! Yale. You know, when that game went all went down and was over with, a lot of people brackets was busted then. Oh man, busted busted out the wazoo, brother. Hey, you might as well take a stick of dynamite and step it up in the brackets right then. As a matter of you know, fact, speaking of brackets, right, when Michigan State lost that game, out of 13 million brackets nationwide, worldwide, however you want to put it, there was only six left that was perfect out of, perfect. Thir out of 13 million. So and, like you know, today today there may, some, may be some upsets because you got Hawaii, 13 seed, going against Maryland, number five seed. 
right? You got Northern going 11 seed going against Texas A&M, they th- uh, third seed. You got a uh, you got a uh, Oakland number two going against number ten seed uh, VC VCU, and you got a uh, Notre Dame, as they say Notre Dame going against their six seed going against fourteen seed uh, SF Austin. So it's anybody's game. That's why they call it the March Madness. They should call it the March Insanity. For people who try to predict who's going to win, who's going to take it all, it's insanity. You, you just can't pick it. You know, but here's my thing about these seeds and, and seeding these colleges. Some people get upset because their college is not number one seed, number three seed. Oh, that's what happened there. Long ago, they, oh, they got I, pissed because Michigan, Michigan State wasn't yeah. a number one seed. Hey, I guess, not, look why not, you wasn't a number one seed. You got bounced by Middle Tennessee. <laughs> now, now you wonder why you want the number one seed. Hell, you couldn't even hold on to the number two seed. <laughs> my, my thing, my thing in a nutshell, just be happy that you're in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? Boom, Cause, exactly. Because at, at the end of the game, at the end of the Final Four, when your team is up there cutting the net off the goal, they're not saying – Oh, they you could be number fifteen C whatever. That's not on the trophy. Number fifteen C won the NCAA championship. It's this college won the NCAA championship college basketball. That's all it says. You know, it may be it, it may look good for recruiting. Hey, well we're, we're number one seed in the uh in the in, in the in the NCAA tournament in March Madness. Now you're number two C sitting at home watching everybody else play. And one thing I like about college basketball, uh, the March Madness, is one and done, son. Exactly. One gotta, and done. You got to bring your A game or it's a wrap. You, you know, there's no tomorrow. And it's unfortunate that both Michigan teams got bounced on the same day. You know, uh, <laughs> Michi- Michigan fans and former players, they trolling the internet, making fun of Michigan State. Uh, wait a minute. You got a game late on that night. You got bounced. So you bobbity, know, bobbity boop, bobbity beat. You know, <laughs> but uh, like I said before, and I call it like I always been calling championships all year. I'm not the one to toot my own horn, but like I call it, my Tar Heels will win it all. They okay, win. yeah, all right, all right. What's your other team? There's no other <laughs> team. There's I'm, no other I'm team. Calling. There's no other team. We don't play that game now. I'm we don't calling do that. shenanigans. We don't play that game. I'm, call us. Call in for the Virgin Islands and the Detroit metro area, even from Central Texas. I'm calling shenanigans on wheels, Tar Heels. We don't play that game. Winning it all. Yes. You know you got another team, a backup to who, the backup. Let me, to the backup. Let, me, let me backtrack here a little bit. Yeah. Little long yeah. Who, yeah. who said it? Who, who called Kansas City to win the um, major, what? major <laughs> league bas- you- baseball <laughs> championship? Didn't I call it at the beginning of the season? What everybody called who, it? What are you talking about? No, no, about? I ain't know everybody called it. No, you didn't believe it. You was going with your Tigers. Who also called that um, Denver Broncos would win the Super Bowl? Yours truly here. What? Yours truly here. What? So, hey, so far, I'm 2-0. Two, two and oh. <laughs> North Carolina's going to win the national championship. I'm going to be 3-0. and oh. Golden State will win the NBA championship. I will be 4-0. Oh. In other words, get out the broom, Longhorn. Great mind thinks alike. Remember that me and Barack, we here, but uh, he kind of lost me when he picked Kansas <laughs> over North Carolina. You lost me, El Presidente. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> spe- speaking of El Presidente, he down in Cuba chilling today, ain't he? He going to be down there chilling. Oh, yeah. We don't open up ties with Cuba now, nah, man. They don't, They won't even stop the uh, boats and the uh, things that's going down there. Only randomly if they feel like it. So now you go to Cuba, man. Go on down there, get you some of the Cubana cigars, and just relax, brother. Right, I think that's how I'm gonna put that. On, I think I'm about to put that on one of my uh, trips here. Yes, yes, definitely. I gotta go check it out. You know, see what's happening. I'm just a nosy person. I gotta see what's going on in different places. That's why I like traveling. I just like to see, stick my head in the door in the window, and say, like, what y'all doing in here? You're just, you're just nosy. <laughs> yeah, I'm just nosy <laughs> like that. You know, so. Uh, I plan on awesome. the, a matter of fact, uh, you know, if I go into much details, I don't know it's not official yet on my calendar, Longhorn, but I might be, you know, making a little trip down that way this year. There's nothing official yet, but 
You, you know, my people are checking off into it. All right, all right. Come on down. Hey, we you take know, you down there to so you can hablo espanol, so you get your your hablo espanol better. No, 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 no. I'm coming down there to get the people together to build a wall for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you go throw the first oh, brick boy. on the wall. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna cut. You gonna be out there building and building a wall. I'm cutting the building. I'm coming down there to cut the ribbon. <laughs> now let me stop playing. Let me stop. That let me wall know. is not gonna be built, and it's not gonna be paid for by Mexico. That's just yeah, look. I'm nah. letting you know that right now. Hey, did y'all see last night? Not not to get off the subject, but just, well, yesterday this morning on the news, when a guy was at the Trump rally and threw on the Ku Klux Klan. Thing and got beat down by the no, brother. I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, man, he got beat down. I think it was in Arizona. Man, that was funny as hell. <laughs> you know, I was like, uh -huh. hell no, you gonna throw on a clan's head? I mean, who and think you just gonna trump him, walk in front of black people? Oh and my it's gosh. Like, but <laughs> I mean, this is really who Trump wants supporting him. That's just unbelievable to me. Yeah, well, why you why you take my big dummy, man? <laughs> uh -oh. My big dummy. oh, you saw that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you can still add it as your big dummy, you know. Yeah, I we'll mean, pretend we didn't hear it. Exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. Right. All the listening audience, act like you didn't hear what he just said. <laughs> All right, check this out. What we're going to do, Longhorn, and the people out there that's listening on the radio and on TV, when we come back, you know, we're going to, um, you know, much going on. March Madness, it, it is what it is. The NBA season is about to wrap up here pretty soon. I mean, what can you say? It yeah. is what it is. I mean, Golden State, they lost against um, your Spurs down there in Texas last night. But I still see them getting that record. Right. I still see them getting that record and um, beating the Bulls, um, you know, record. They seven, seven down. All they need, hey, they lose four more. That's a wrap. Was it 72 um, and 10? No, I wasn't 70, yeah. 72 yep. and 10. That's what they record yep. they're going for. So I really see them getting that. I see them repeating. But the NBA, it is what it is, you know. Pistons, they won here back to back, so they're holding down the eighth playoff spot. So it's the Detroit Red Wings, you know, where they all fighting to, you know, make the play. And then, and then, like you said, Longhorn, the bottom line, all you have to do is just make it. Damn, what seeds you are! Just make it. You know, and if you just call yourself a true champion and you have a true team that you believe in, hell, you take on all comers. That's you don't, right. You don't care what seeds you are, just make it. That's all you have to do. It's just have what they call that a puncher's um, boxer. What they call that a puncher's or boxer's. Um, yeah, come on. Y'all know what I'm trying a to say. A knockout punch? No. Okay. Let's no. <laughs> the I, bell? I know, I know what the hell a damn buff <laughs> pub. The ring? <laughs> a knockout oh, punch. You, what are you trying to say, man? Just give us a chance. Just <laughs> put me in the game, coach. I just want to get I in mean, what, there. What's that saying? I mean, it's on the tip of my tongue. You know, like when you. Like um, when you got somewhere, you know, you get your ass beat and you just take that lucky Hail Mary swing and just... A Hail Mary punch. And, and just knock somebody out with just... just oh, you're thinking about the mouth guard. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> just forget I even brought that up. Just, just move uh, on. Just, what you trying to say, just put me in the game, Coach. I don't care where you put me in. Just, <laughs> hey, just put me in there. Give me a chance. Give me a fight chance. chance. That's right. I'll show you. All right, check this out. A, I could have been a contender. <laughs> check this out. We're going to um, take a quick commercial break here. When we come back, um, I have a serious question. I, mean, I know y'all probably done heard about Mateen Cleves getting in this situation here at the hotel room, you know, allegedly raping a female. You know, of course, he was, you know, the big thing here in Detroit, Michigan, because he, he led Michigan State, you know, basketball to a national championship. Wasn't much of an NBA player. But my question to you guys is basically <laughs> this. Is basically this. What player or, let's just say, star period, that you had high hopes on, and they just let you down by doing something stupid. You know, so we'll get y'all answer when we come back. We'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor. Detroit Sports Jersey Media is the hottest sports radio show in Detroit and beyond. We stretch to the Virgin Islands and the heart of Texas. For advertising information, email info at DetroitSportsJerseyMedia.com 
or call 313-624-7814. We air live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on 107.3 FM WVIE. Detroit Sports Jersey Media is sponsored by ENO Productions. Are you looking to create a professional slideshow or video for business or a special celebration? Then go to fiverr.com slash ENO Productions for top quality video production work. Orders are done to your taste and specifications. ENO Productions is the team that everyone goes to when they want their videos done right. That's ENO Productions. Go to fiverr.com slash ENO Productions. That's F I V E R R.com slash ENO Productions. Detroit Sports Jersey Media is sponsored by Sandra Dela Cruz. Sandra Dela Cruz is an independent beauty consultant for Mary Kay Cosmetics. She is based out of Killeen, Texas. To reach her, her phone number is 254 681 2456, or you can shoot an email to S. Dela Cruz, that's S D E L A C R U Z, S. Dela Cruz 622 at Mary Kay. Dot com. She is enriching women's lives with Mary Kay. All right, welcome back to Detroit Sports Jersey Media. I'm your host, Will Longhorn, and Shaz are sitting next to me. What time is it, Longhorn? Game time, prime time, Detroit Sports Jersey Media time. Let's get it on. All right. Top Beautiful. crew in the land. That's what I'm talking about. You better exactly. ask somebody. If you don't know, now you know. 313-868-0351-868-0342. All right, before we went to the um, commercial break, you know, like I said, you know, you got homeboy back here, Mateen Cleves, getting caught up in a situation. Met a female at a golf outing. They went, supposed to, he's supposed to have took her back home, but they end up at a hotel room. They got videotape of him, you know. Girl running out naked, he pulling her back in, you know, of course his yeah. lawyer, of course his lawyer saying that, you know, he was trying to calm her down. He didn't want no half naked woman running down the street. But my thing is, you know, why would you put yourself in that position, man? I'm telling you, man, these athletes need to start waking up. But my question to you guys and anybody out there that listen and want to chime in, three one three eight six eight oh three five one. Three one three eight six eight zero oh, three four two. Start with you, Shaza. Mm -hmm. What big? Well, you're not that much into athlete, even though I mean sports, even though this is a sports show. But what person that you not idolize, but you know, like okay, I like this person. They cool. You know what I'm saying? I can see me hanging out with them. You know, and blah 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 blah. But all <laughs> of a sudden, they did something stupid. They just let you down, just bust your bubble. I mean, just disappointed, just rocked your world. Just <laughs> you, you just was in such disgust. I mean, your skin <laughs> was crawling, you know. Well, I don't know if I was that close to this person. <laughs> but I mean, I'm I th telling you. But I think like most of America and the world, I mean, Dr. Cosby, really that whole situation, and it's not – um, something that would fall under, you know, a stupid judgment or anything like that. But it's something that's just been extremely disappointing because I grew up watching the Cosby show. Like a lot of us have great respects for him as a, as an educator and everything that he was trying to do. I've heard him speak and I mean, just everything that's happened. Um, you know, all these women that are coming out, um, about the whole situation really did, I mean, disappoint me and has just been very, very difficult to deal with. Um, you know, for I think a lot of us, you know, somebody that we really looked up to. And I know he's he's human and maybe we shouldn't have put him up on a pedestal in the first place. But I mean, I really, truly did respect him as a human being and, you know, as an actor and a comedian and what he was trying to do for for children and, and the community. So definitely Bill Cosby. So do you believe those allegations or do you think that's just rumors or you think people are trying to cash in to get rich? I, I do believe the majority of them. I mean, there may be, um, you know, a couple of people that, you know, maybe are making things up, but I think there are too many people. And, you know, I, I don't fall into the group of people that says, well, why did you wait so long? I think, you know, 
people handle things differently. I mean, when you're when you're raped or when something tragic like that happens. So, I mean, that part, you know, they spoke when they were ready to speak. Um, so I, I do think there's some truth to the, to it, definitely. Um, it's just a terrible situation all the way around. I mean, I feel bad for the women, for, uh, you know, his wife, his family, you know, his children. Um, so you look at him at a different, you look at him in a different light now? Yeah, I don't know how you couldn't look at him differently. Well, ain't I mean, nothing I, been proven yet. So you, you got the man all guilty when well, ain't nothing been proven. Well, I mean, they, you know, they I have mean, so how can you look at somebody differently when ain't nothing been proven yet? I mean, they do have him speaking about at least one person in one situation. And so, and really, I mean, that, that's enough. And I have never heard him, you know, apologize or take any type of responsibility or anything like that, which is actually even worse. Like if you talk about, I know you're talking about athletes, um, like if you take somebody like um, Michael Vick, and I actually didn't know a lot about Michael Vick until everything happened with, you know, the um, the dogs and the pit bulls and everything um, that was going on. But I think he actually has taken responsibility. I mean, he went through his, what they call it, rehab. That you no, went he went through. to jail. Well, he went he to went prison. <laughs> no damn rehab. He, well, went, no, he was, was locked like, up it was like animal, and locked down. Um, but now if you ask him about animals, I think he has a very different view. So I think he, you know, woke up in some ways and has developed some compassion. I don't think he's the same person that he was. And so... You know, even though I was upset at that time with what happened, I think that, you know, when somebody takes responsibility and apologizes and you know that there's a change that's been made, you can forgive and move on. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't want to seem like I'm being judgmental against Dr. Kazu, but that's too serious when you're, when you're harming my sisters out there. That's just... You know, all right, too much. All right. There you my go. opinion. Uh, Shaw's opinion. Three one three eight six eight zero three five one three one three eight six eight zero three four two. Longhorn. What's the person that you kind of you know looked up to? You know, you thought you could sit down, have a beer with. You know, was your homie lover friend? I mean. <laughs> What? <laughs> I can't wait to hear Wills because he's obviously very close <laughs> to whoever <laughs> let him down. You know, who was supposed Man, to? Who, I know when, who, I know when you say yours, boy, yours must have you out uh, uh, running around Bell Isle with a paper bag over your head or sitting right. in a room in the middle of the night clicking light on and off, crying with Kleenex. <laughs> can't eat, can't eat, can't sleep. <laughs> Having nightmares, <laughs> night terrors. So who right. was the person that uh, you know? You right there, Abby, for yours and everything, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> so who was the person that um, you know, let you down? I, I'm, just, I'm just gonna taste before you start putting more adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. The person who the per, the athlete who I thought had a very, very, very promising career that uh, I wish hadn't have messed up is Mike Iron Tyson. I wish Mike Tyson would have would have had uh, better people in his corner to help the brother uh, uh, along his pro career, cause the guy was just killing him. I mean, he was just destroying people left to right. And I think if he had a better if he had better people in his corner during his career, he would still be in the boxing game now. Not maybe as a boxer, but he would be somewhere in the game as promoting that sport. And his name will still be up there with the greatest of the great, as in a positive, uh, uh, um, a positive name. Like you say, Muhammad Ali, you think positive of boxers. You think Mike Tyson, you think him biting people's ears off, uh, the allegations of rape, you know, uh, his girl giving, taking his money or whatever, you know, all that crazy stuff. But if he had the right people in his in his corner. I think Mike Tyson. That's that's my boy. I wish I wish he'd have had a a good long career in boxing because I think boxing would still be on the map today if Iron Mike Tyson was still up there and, and doing his thing. Yeah, boxing's dead. Let's face it, it's dead. It's flat out <laughs> dead. Ain't, ain't nobody. It's in a coma. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dead. But I'm on. So, uh, but if he was still, if he was still, if he was, if he was doing right, the right things, had the right people in his corner. Boxing would still be killing him, I'm trying to tell you. Because when he was out there, boxing was on point, brother. You know, I have a few people that uh, kind of, you know, let me down, you know, and I wish that their careers would have, you know, basically it's 
it's the same two that y'all talked about earlier, and that's Michael Vick mm-hmm. and uh, Mike Tyson. You know, I wish their careers could have ended better than what they, you know, mm-hmm. ended in. For sure, even though Michael Vick still playing, but he ain't the same Michael Vick he was before all this jumped off. Right. You know, so you know he still got to carry that around with him for the rest of his life. People still gonna be judgmental of him, you know, because Lord forbid they never done nothing wrong in their lives and never asked for forgiveness. Um, Mike Tyson, I think, like you said, Longhorn, you hit the nail on the head. He should have had better people in his corner, which he did when he started off. Um, right. well, I think that his uh, manager and training was Custio, Custio, whatever, you know, before he passed away. Mike Tyson, he had Mike Tyson, you know, level-headed, grounded. Right. You know what I'm saying? When Don King entered his life, it was yeah, the old hair, dude. It was the, it was the <laughs> it was the beginning of the end for dear old Mike Tyson. You know what I'm telling you? Let them speak on Don King real fast. You know what I ain't like about him, man. You know, and, and I couldn't understand why people could never figure this out. How can you walk in? And it's not just with Mike Tyson. This is all the boxers he, you know, managed or whatever. You know, oh, your, 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 your boxer walk in as the champ. He lose, and you walking out the ring with the new champ. I could That's just, I, I could never understand yeah. that, man. I could just never, you know, that could just, in my mind, man, I could just never grasp that. Like, why is people not? Saying anything, because I'm, I'm telling everybody, I don't give a damn who get mad. Don King killed boxing. He yeah. killed it. He flat out killed it. You know, and and, and um, he destroyed Mike. Took his money. You know, y'all should go check out the one man show. Mike Tyson did. He'll tell you. It's a fantastic show. It really yeah, is. It really go is. check it out. He, he pours him, his heart out in that show. Yeah. You know, Don King took all his money, charged him eight hundred dollars or what's it, eight hundred, eight thousand dollars for a damn towel. Right, it was ridiculous. Are you serious? Yeah. Dog, serious? Shouldn't Mike yeah. have known a little bit better though? But to take some responsibilities, some of these athletes need to slow their ass down, stop making it rain, pop stop popping these bottles to ace of spades and all this mm-hmm. and get your ass back in school. And learn the business of which you are talented in so people can't take advantage of you. Yeah. You know, whether it's boxing, baseball, football, you need to get your ass in school and learn the business part of it. Right. Seriously. You the yeah, one got the ta- you the one got the talent. Yeah. They need you. You don't need them. You know yeah, they got a lot of, you know they got all them entourages just hanging around them hanger rooms. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, but yeah. So them two, two right there, really kind of, you know, like wow. You know, I just wish their careers would have took a better turn than what they did. Mike Tyson and my, uh, Michael Vick, you know, was a big letdown to me. See, and I love Mike Tyson as a boxer, man. That was my dude. Ooh. That was man. my dude, man. Walk up in there with a, just know? a towel around his neck. <laughs> you know, um, but one, two, three, you on the floor. It is what it is. Okay, check this out. I got another social media question for you guys. All and right. this is dealing with sports. Sports. Three Bring one, it on, Pity. 313 <laughs> if anybody want to chime in on this. Now, I'm quite sure y'all done heard about the baseball player for the White Sox, Adam LaRoche. Yes. He was due to make $13 million this year. He walked away from that because they would not let his son play baseball. So let me ask you a question. How many of y'all, Carla, you live on Detroit Sports Jersey? Line one him. Did I get him? You live on Detroit Sports Jersey Media. Are you there, caller? Did I hit the right button? Uh, next. Yeah, there you go. Hello. Hello. How are you? All right. What's going on, Jersey girl? Hello, you all right? Hello, Jersey girl. Hello. Oh shoot. What, what's <laughs> up, Jersey girl? What it do, y'all? What it is, <laughs> what it was, what it's gonna be like. What it's gonna be like. 
gonna do? Well, okay, all right. Uh, enough of all this, <laughs> this ice, ice cube and yo yo. <laughs> you know enough of that. Ice girl, <laughs> ice girl. Yeah, but check this out. The question was put out there. Adam LaRoche walking away from thirteen million because he can't bring his son to every game. Would you turn down or would you quit your job because you couldn't bring your kids to work with you every day? Start with you, Shazza. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know you don't have no kids, but let's just say you did. You know what? Um, I know that he loves his son, obviously, like most fathers do. And I know he liked bringing him to the games and, you know, introducing him to his job and that kind of thing. And I'm sure he built a lot of great memories with his child as well. But I think he took it too personally, you know, when they said, we don't want your son in the locker room or not here that often. You know, I think he took it to heart like you don't love my son or care about my son. And he took it really personally and then just quit. I don't know. I don't think that was a, a smart idea at all. I would never leave that much money on the table, you know, over something like that. Um, I mean, they didn't harm his child. They just said, you know, just don't bring him to that this, much they didn't ban this, him for a lot they just told him we don't want him around that much that often right and so and i mean i think it's understandable maybe other players were uncomfortable because he was in the locker room people are changing that kind of thing so you know i think the dad probably should have just stepped back to, stepped back and just looked at the situation um because if you tell me not to bring my kid right. in i'm sorry i'm not you know leave you know my job that is going to support him and that's money that could have gone towards his child also he could have you know put that towards his college a trust fund something like that and i don't know does he have does laroche have other kids as well or is this his only child i don't know but that's I mean, a good question i don't know if he does anymore yeah I, I i don't know i think he he just kind of took it the wrong way made sort of a rash decision you know i, I don't think it was meant to, for him to take it as, you know, we, we don't let your child, don't bring him around here. You know. What about you, Jersey girl? Would you quit your job because your kid couldn't come to school? I mean, your kid couldn't come to work every day? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I got bills to pay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, no, you know, it's a crazy situation and Okay, for instance, his son is there. That's great. But do you guys want my daughters in there with him? Exactly. No, you guys don't want my daughters. I don't want my daughters in a professional athlete locker. And so I think they have every right to say, you know what? He doesn't need to be here all the time. They can scale it back. He can be there, you know, during the summer, a couple of games here and there. You know, stuff like that. And people here are like, oh, well, what about Prince Fielder and all that other stuff? I'm like, Prince was there, but he wasn't ubiquitous. He wasn't there all the time. You know, every time you turn around, there was Prince. There wasn't that. And besides, he and his daddy didn't get along after a while. So there's that. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Were they oh, arguing yeah. in the locker dad room? Don't get along. I'm talking oh. about Prince and Celso, no, they don't. Oh, no, okay. No. okay. No, he, they, don't, they don't get along the way he did the mom and his gambling oh, okay. problem okay. and all that. You know, that's why they don't get along, see, eye to eye. Gotcha. You know, what about you, Longhorn? $13 million. That's why they got DVR. <laughs> that's, why they got, that's why they got practice. Yeah, you, you, I'll bring them to practice. Hey, but little, hey, little man, you ain't got to come to all the games. $13 million. Me and the players, we get together and have a little practice scrimmage for you could outside. You, could you roll your game. window up, Jersey girl, please? You know what I'm My saying? I, I rolled up. Well, there's some there's insulation no, in your car then. There's no way in the world <laughs> I'm going to give up $13 million. You're going to tell me, hey. My, hey, for thirteen million dollars, my son ain't got never come to their game, <laughs> their <laughs> locker room. Exactly, so, brother. Hey, I will buy you a team. <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you think about? he was ready? Was he just ready to retire and leave anyways? And this was just kind of an let, easy out. Let, I can't believe at all. He was kind of a young He's a bum. Like he's a bum. He's a bum. Hey, he's hey, bad at two. He, he bad at he bad at two oh seven last year. Well, he's he's a bum. Good money for a bum. <laughs> but see, let me tell you, I can't believe out all three of y'all, y'all ain't addressed the elephant in the room. 
What's the elephant in the room? Him being in the <laughs> in the locker room. He didn't like that black man telling him, "Don't bring your kid to work." I didn't even know it was a black man who told him. Yes, that has nothing to do. Yes, it do. <laughs> yes, it do. Why do we always have to bring? He you know went. The card I said. I the Kenny Williams. Kenny Williams, the black man, the GM of the team. Told this self entitlement person, which he think he is, I don't want your kid in this locker room every game. Henry, this is not about race. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I I card out there. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, all, yes, it is. I hey, guarantee that? you that's what it's about. It's about the card, huh? Yes. You don't oh, walk away oh, so you don't walk away from thirteen million dollars because somebody said and it's not like he said he couldn't come in every game. He said, I don't want to hear it all game. You can bring him here some game. Well maybe maybe the players maybe that player is just whack or doodle. No, 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 well, no. Maybe no, just, maybe just whack or doodle, bro. Yeah, there were complaints from other players. It wasn't just the GM. He didn't like the fact that that black man told him during don't bring your little <laughs> white son in this <laughs> locker is room. That, is that how we worded it? That might have been the problem. <laughs> I don't think that's how we worded it. <laughs> that's how he <laughs> took it. That ain't how he was. That ain't how he worded. It. That's how he took it. Hey, is that, is that what your sources say? <laughs> y'all, y'all scared to address the elephant in the room. Y'all scared. Nobody's scared but, to me. It just isn't relevant. As I was kind of looking into the situation a little bit more, I did see that um, Ken Williams is an African American. He's a black man. Oh, I wonder if that maybe had a little something to do with it. It had a lot to do with it. I don't think so. It had a I lot. Think a lot. I you don't, you black man, you don't tell me I can't bring little Bobby in here. And I'm, I'm the star of this team. I mean, I think it's a hard really situation to address with anybody, you know, with somebody's child. Thirteen million dollars that ain't hard to address. No, I'm saying that you know, if you have to tell, pull someone aside and say we don't want you bringing your child here, well, no matter what the race is, it's going to be a hard discussion. But to listen, have. see, y'all missing. I'm telling you why it was a race issue. He didn't say not to bring him in every game. He's I don't want him at all the game. You can still bring him. We just don't so need it. We just don't need to see his ass eighty-one times out of, <laughs> out of the year. Wait, was the issue him coming to the games, or was the issue him being in the locker in the room? locker room? So that was the in problem. The he, he, can... he was there in the locker room. He was doing drills with the team. Right. They were, you know, he was just around. He was there. Yeah. And then I'm telling so, you something else with that so open up too. So why is that a race issue, brother? I don't understand where Hello, you come with this race you. car. Exactly. Oh, okay. First of all. Kenny That's because the dude is black, the kid is white, the player is white. Right. You give up thirteen million dollars, you yep. wacko. Yep, I guarantee you. you gotta, I guarantee you. you I guarantee you he'll be voting for Trump. I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee. And then that proves your point. <laughs> and then, exactly. I guarantee you. He's campaigning for Trump. Oh Go. man, I'm throwing my hands up on that. Hey, I'm, I'm throwing the flag on you on that one. <laughs> See y'all, y'all scared to address the <laughs> elephant in the room. I'm not scared to address it. I saw it when it first came out. What was going? On. You don't walk away from 13 million dollars because your you son. Do if, you do if you're crazy. And then you a bum, and you you have to, you, you, your career is declining. You need that 13 million. You you're not helping the team out. You're not the star of the team. You you know you need you're not putting up all these numbers you used to put up. You're actually stealing 13 million dollars. You should take it and shut up. Well, basically, he saved the team money, so good riddance. Adios, amigo. All right, check this out. Here go my next social media question. Oh, Lord. Oh, All right, that's what we rocking with today. That's what we rocking with. 313-868-0351. 313-868-0342. Of course, everybody know Russell Wilson and Sierra got engaged, right? Yes. But, you see that right. lot, though. Yeah, but they Gorgeous. said that now... Nah, What's going on out here? Well, I didn't go into the detail of the story. The headlines just caught my attention, and I just wanted to get, I ain't give a damn about the guys thing, but they say a growing number of men on Facebook are outraged by the Russell Wilson and Sierra engagement. What? Why? Yeah. What? Why are they yeah. outraged? But here's the thing. I don't understand why they're outraged because they knew this was coming. You know, so. you know they knew that Sierra and Russell were a thing. They it's not know. like they. It's not like they was lining up 
asking for a hand in marriage because the guys who are outraged, nine times out of ten don't even travel in the circle that she's in and would will, will never even met, meet her anyway. So it's not like they sitting around waiting to say, hey, girl, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Let's go out for some fat burgers or well, something. You know well, what I'm see, saying? I don't think it's so much that they want to get with Sierra. I think they um a little ticked off because I guess the way that he's handling – you know, they got a kid together with Future. I think that's what's pissing a lot of men off. Like, wow. What difference does it make? And he's stepping up to the plate, you know. And what he, are these uh, deadbeat dad, child supporters, <laughs> witness protection <laughs> program, hiders? <laughs> yeah. If the deadbeat dad's a little all in their feelings, then they got to check this out. But if they're what in the world? Future, but if Future is like trying to do stuff with the kid and stuff like that. At least Russell, to me, seems like the type that wouldn't preclude that and be like, here, go take your son and do what you got to do with them. Right. But when your son's with me, this is what we're going to do. And I think that that's okay. I don't have a problem with it either. I mean, you know, he's around somebody that's positive. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, Russell Wilson, he got a nice job, a career, benefits. <laughs> yeah, he got benefits. Oh. He's got benefits. Yeah, the, you know, the mama's happy. Future out here, he dating other women, sleep with other women. So I don't understand why he always throwing shade on Russell Wilson. That's jealousy. All that is is jealousy. Exactly. That's all that is. You out here sleeping with other women. You didn't want her. What's the problem? You know, oh, oh, she's happy. Oh, that that's go the, the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, you you didn't make her as happy as Russell doing, or yeah. should I say, you didn't bring it like Russell's bringing? If y'all know what I mean. <laughs> Russell hasn't brought anything. Oh, really bringing it? Yeah, <laughs> Russell, Russell's bringing it. Yeah, no, he's, he just throwing. He just he just throwing, He's just throwing more than footballs. <laughs> <laughs> he's got one hand on the dump button. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Russell Wilson, <laughs> I don't know why anybody would complain if two people are in love, they're going to get married. I mean, w just offer your congratulations and wish yeah. the best I for don't think it's cause everybody. I think Russell is a cornball. Is he? I don't know. He, he kind of does look like a cornball, but. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Oh, you know what? I'm, I, that's who she likes, right? Exactly. You know what? You know, I'm, I'm glad. You, I'm glad you spoke on that. Cause I heard this on the radio the other morning that uh, this girl uh, she wrote in. I'm only since we got two ladies on the line. Get y'all opinion of this. That this lady was dating this guy, right? She kicked him to the curb because he was too nice. She want a thug, and she likes women. She like guys that has more than one female at a time. How do y'all feel about that? I mean, they saying he was just too nice. You know, he didn't have, you know, he was too faithful to her. I feel More like than one female yeah, at she, a time. Yeah. She like that. Yeah. I feel like yeah, that's so she, that's so she can cheat. <laughs> that's what that was about. <laughs> that's what that means. How old is she? I don't know. Exactly. They didn't give her the age, you know, I'm just wanted, you know, it just was curious to get y'all opinion on that. I, when I, heard I think sometimes, girls and women go through phases maybe where they do want that that quote unquote thug but i mean yeah they want them and then when they in their 20s and their early 30s but when they dragging four or five babies down the street <laughs> in their late 30s and 40 <laughs> now they looking for a good man to take care of that thug kid get the hell out of here and I, feel, I feel like there's huh? more to that story <laughs> if this guy really is a good guy and he's faithful and i mean there's going to be a ton of women out there that will love to be with him but there could be more to it that we don't even know Three one three eight six eight zero three five one three one three eight six eight zero three four two. so you like him thuggish well before you got married um jersey girl did you like him thuggish no i really didn't like him thuggish you didn't like you didn't like the you didn't like the pants <laughs> sagging the braid no, the nappy braids no, to the back of the head <laughs> you say you was what no i wasn't a pants sagging corn <laughs> I, no. I I was more so of a Russell Wilson type of chick. Oh, she likes the corn balls. <laughs> I like the corn balls, kind of, kind of. So the thugs don't turn you on. The thugs never were because I'm always like, you guys are like doing stuff illegal and <laughs> you potentially could go to jail. And I'm not trying to, you know. Bail nobody out. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, absolutely. 
Oh, oh man, somebody must dump me. Must said they said I was too nice. They said you was too nice, long huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. When I was in high school, the girl said I was too nice. I'm like, what kind of well, <laughs> what kind of stuff is that? that? <laughs> I was too I nice. I got a lot of that. I got a lot of. You're just too sweet. Oh, you're so innocent. You're so this. And yeah. Back in my but days, them was the freaky fun. ones. <laughs> Sometimes that's... <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> them innocent ones, them too nice ones. Yeah, you was a church girl? Not really a church girl, so to speak. Kind of, but not really. Yeah, you was a freak. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you was a hoe. I just said you was a freak. <laughs> I was going to say, people didn't even give me a chance. They didn't want to give you a chance? To do what? what do, to do what? <laughs> to do anything. Like, I never went out with anybody because I was too nice. When did you start okay, dating? How old were you when you started dating? All right, speak, speaking of, the, speaking of the NBA getting ready to wrap up. <laughs> what did she say? The NBA getting ready to wrap up, wrap it up. <laughs> All right, oh speaking God. of the NBA, one more social media question for you guys, and then we're going to switch subject. Uh, Longhorn got some black history moments he want to throw out there. Excellent. Check this out. Yes. Y'all know, let me ask you, would y'all be offended by this if y'all was in this situation? Yes. Now, check this out. Y'all know LeBron. <laughs> so <I> say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but look, y'all know LeBron's a great basketball player. That's what I was saying, right? We all can agree on that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah he's, he's good. He's, he's, sure. Yeah, he's great. Now, Let's say you's a great whatever y'all do in y'all career, y'all great at that. But Le- LeBron's two sons <laughs> came to him and told him that they they want to be like one want to be like Stephen Curry, and one want to <laughs> be like Russell Westbrook. Would y'all be offended if y'all kids came to y'all? Those are kids. Are they? No. Uh, saying, no. That, that I wouldn't kids. be offended. Uh, I wouldn't be offended. Great, recognize uh, great, right? Well, but their daddy's yeah. great. But that's their dad, yeah, their too. Exactly. You know, and when you're at a certain age, it's just like your dad is your dad. Just like with President Obama, he's talked about Malia and Sasha being embarrassed of him. And so there have been times when Malia, I know, has had, you know, sleepovers at the White House, and she hasn't even wanted to introduce her friends to her father because he's going to be embarrassing or ask them too many questions about school. So maybe his kids are like that where they, you know, they love his dad and respect him, but, you know, they'd rather be like, Stefan, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be feel bad. Cause, I, hey, I, Curry, I, Curry, I, hey, Curry got something that uh that James done. He got a good. He got a good outside shot. Not only he's got a great outside shot, but he also takes the ball to the hole, so he's not scared to take it on the inside. But you know, as it like something like your kid come to you and say, LeBron kid come to say, I want to be president of the United States. See, LeBron say, No, you ain't gonna be the president of the United States. You are gonna play ball like me. Uh, LeBron, you know what I'm saying? If LeBron was any really black daddy, he'd have packed their bags and dropped them <laughs> off at Russell <laughs> Westbrook House. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's what I'd have did. I'd have packed the bag and dropped them straight off at their house. Did you want to be like them? Go live with them. Make it light on my pockets. <laughs> that's what they should have did. That's what LeBron that's should petty. That's petty. You're petty. I'm petty. I'd have packed the bags. <laughs> I'd have been patty patty as I'm driving down the freeway <laughs> with their bags packed. And matter of fact, take off my shoes. Go put on some Stephen Curry shoes and some Russell, Russell Westbrook shoes. See how they fit on your feet. Yeah. Because you're patty. Uh, yeah. All right, Longhorn, give us some black history moments as I pack right. as I pack the Jersey Girl bags and Shaza bags. <laughs> <laughs> All right, black history moments. For those for those people who got all them creepy crawlers around their houses, you know, we like to thank uh, Albert C. Richardson, who invented the uh, insect destroyer can. The oh. insect destroyer can. Okay. I thought you were about to say you brought, <laughs> brought the first roach in somebody's house. <laughs> <laughs> you got that Trump supporter over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's a first <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then he invented the can to kill it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, hey, what a way to start a problem. Come tell me I got a solution for you. <laughs> oh, man. All right, he invented this insect destroyer can in 1899. Okay. 
the ironing board. <laughs> some people need to visit the ironing board more <laughs> often if you go outside and see some people walk around in wrinkly, crinkly clothes. And people, if you ain't got an ironing board, use your bed, use your mattress, use the floor. Please use something. The but the ironing clothes. board was invented by Sarah Boone okay. in 18. 18- uh, 87, the ironing board. I like creases in my clothes. I don't know about some people. Some people just take them straight out of the dang old hamper and just put them on. I don't understand it. The lantern. Shaza say, Shaza say, why are you talking about her? Like <laughs> people sell iron? Come on. <laughs> I lo- hey, I love the iron. I've been ironing my own clothes since I was like eight years old. I love the iron. You got to have creases. I'm sorry. I, 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 can't, I, can't even go, I can't even go to the gym with a wrinkled T-shirt to work out. Are you it serious? Has to have creases. You have to iron uh, your T-shirts. Yes. Oh, my I can't, God. I can't. What? Why? I can't yeah, walk out of the house no wrinkled up T-shirt. Are you serious? Oh well, my gosh, it's for the T-shirt. Well, well, he wow, got. Well, he, well, he got to make sure all the men and that see Buff Jones walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more. There's more all to them, this story. All them, all them sweaty, all them sweaty men and uh, making sure he walked in with a crisp, clean T-shirt. <laughs> hey, I gotta. Hey, I gotta iron my T-shirts. So I can't walk out of no wrinkled up T-shirt. That's that's a no go. I know for some okay, people, then. ironing is like is it it's um relaxing is that how it is yeah you? it's relaxing I hate yeah ironing. i hate it with the passion it. it's horrible it's so, relaxing so who, so so who invented that again longhorn sarah the iron sarah so, boom see there you go y'all women see y'all just like women hating on another woman that invented the iron <laughs> i'm glad she invented there it there y'all go that's what women do y'all <laughs> Hate hey, black, hey, black woman hating get, on another black woman. <laughs> hey, 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 Will, trying to get me go out with a wrinkled T-shirt. <laughs> go against Sarah, boy. Oh, my God. All right. You guys are so All crazy. right, moving on down to the lantern. The lantern for anybody who, who getting their lights turned off. Go, go see Michael C. Harvey. He, he's dead now. Okay. But he invented Is the that's... lantern in 1884. Okay. So if you need a lantern, so he invented that. The lock. Washington A. Martin in 1893 invented the lock. I don't know what he had to lock up. <laughs> Maybe I'll lock up his ironing board. <laughs> then, in 19, then 1950, Poopkey and Ray Ray started picking them, huh? <laughs> 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 the All right, lock. Donald. <laughs> All right. Well, last but not least, the lubricating cap. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Not the Jerry Curl for the Jerry Curl. <laughs> I need to go burn that up. <laughs> no, I need to go. I said, as soon as I saw this, we were going to say about the Jerry Curl cow. <laughs> no. Uh, unless they were doing Jerry Curls in 1895. <laughs> they probably were. The, lub- the lubricating cap was invented by Elijah McCoy in 1895. And that's your Black History Month. So, <laughs> all right, let's get Very to these nice. big dummies. You ready to hit it, hand down? Let's get to these big dummies real fast. Ooh, you got a big dummy, Charles? Do I have? I don't have one. I'll see if I can think of one. But yeah. um, I just want to say I'm glad that you guys are doing Black History Month through the year. I love that. There you go. All right, Jersey girl, you got your big dummy for the week? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Let the people know. Denzel Valentine, you are my big dummy. You stay humble. You don't guarantee championships. You just say, you know, we're just going to play the next one, play the next game. You don't guarantee championships. Yeah, that's... Denzel Valentine, you're my big dummy. <laughs> all right, all right. You ready, Sean? She's very passionate big... about that. You ready? Got your big Um, I don't. I, you know, I didn't know I had to have a big dummy today. All right, Longhorn, who's your big dummy? <laughs> My big dumb is somebody who thinks a lubricating cap is for Jerry Curls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be my big dummy too. <laughs> I'm gonna piggyback on that one. That's, that's my big dummy. That's if, if when I mentioned Black History and Inventor, you thought a lubricating cap was for Jerry Curls, exactly. you were my big dummy. Hey, Jerry Curls, S Curl, it could have been for either one. I don't know. I wasn't there back then. What they use it? What, what did they use it for? 
I don't know. <laughs> what did they use it, it for? Was, it wasn't for no Jerry Curl and S Curl. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was not invented, Jerry Curl and S Curl, back in 1895. <laughs> it's for lubricating like oils and stuff like that. Not yeah. oils for your hair, not no Afro sheen either, brother. So, uh, you, better go watch, anyway. you better go watch Harlem Lights. Their hair was pretty laid back then. Exactly. Not, yeah. not in 1895. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my okay. big dummy. Hey, right, I'm gonna go back there. I'm gonna I'm gonna find out a little more research on this here Luke Katie Cap for you for the next show. All right, all right, all right. Um, I really don't have no big dummy for the week. It's actually been a tiring week for me this week and a good week. So I really don't. I know there's some out there, but you know I don't have one. The, the one that the one that you said earlier was a big dummy. Who was that? I don't have no big dummies for this week. So let's give us our final words before we get up out of here. Ladies first. Go ahead, Shaza. What do you have for the people? Well, I just want to say thank you to um, everyone in the Virgin Islands for listening and tuning in. Thank you to everybody in Detroit and Texas. And um, we love our listeners and have a fabulous rest of the weekend. And that's it. Longhorn. I want to say, uh, keep keep your hustle, keep grinding <laughs> until your haters start asking you, are you hiring? So keep hustling, keep grinding until your haters start asking you, are you hiring? That's a good and one. Game time. He stole Brian. that post. Did he come up with that? He stole that off yeah, my he post. Stole he, stole that. That. he stole He stole that off my post. Oh, Go ahead. Longhorn. Jersey. I thought that was all you. <laughs> Jersey girl, who's your big that dummy? Was me. I didn't steal off your post. <laughs> I already have my big dummy. I mean, not big dummy, your final words. I'm sorry. My final words. <clears throat> Congratulations to the University of Michigan women's gymnastics team for their 20 <laughs> seconds. Big Ten championship. Absolutely. One last All right. I love watching the gymnastics. That's just Beautiful. like uh, just like a Wolverine to tear down a Spartan and then come back with something on the Wolverines done done. I didn't tear down a Spartan. I you, just said, sweetie, yeah. don't, don't guarantee these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to say I want everybody to have a nice week. We leading into Good Friday. Mm -hmm. I got a short week be, this be week. Good. Three day weekend. We see everybody on Easter Sunday. You know, yeah. Er everybody gonna be showing up to church in their brand new suits. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. You got we got your pastel pink suit. Ready, yeah, don't we you? we know all about them people like that. Yeah, you y'all uh, ain't been to church all year. But here you come sashaying in with your new suit, new dress. Easter and Christmas. Pastor, pl pastor, pastor pl um, passing the plate twenty times. I'm like, <laughs> you got that building farm, brother. I'm you got like, that building farm. I'm like, Sister Odell, you keep passing. Something going to come up missing. In <laughs> hey, exactly. hey, what about, what about those people talking about they didn't change out the plate? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we up out of here. 11 a.m. next Sunday, Detroit Sports Jersey. Media, the Jersey girl. Longhorn, Shaws, I'm your host, Will. We out of here. Peace out. Oh, deuces. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you listeners from Detroit, Texas, and the Virgin Islands for joining us here live on Detroit Sports Jersey Media with your host, Will, and co-host, Longhorn. Every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on 107.3 FM WBIE. Visit us at DetroitSportsJersey.com. Trade Sports Talk. No professionals here. Have a great week.